Welcome to Trailers from Hell. In the summer of 1963, the Wellington College Film Circle was invited to visit the set of Beckett at Shepperton Studios outside London. I have two particular memories of that day. During lunch, Elizabeth Taylor arrived on the set with a small entourage. We spotty-faced teenagers gazed at the icon with awe. She smiled acknowledgement, and then her face really lit up at the sight of her husband, Richard Burton, returning to the set with co-star Peter O'Toole. Burton clearly saw her and walked right past her without acknowledgement. I saw the smile change to a jab of hurt. Later in the shoot, O'Toole, ever the practical joker, replaced a nude actress under a blanket in his bed with a complicit Elizabeth Taylor just before the cameras rolled. When O'Toole pulled back the blanket revealing Mrs. Burton, Mr. Burton was less than happy as laughter engulfed the set. Beckett's editor, Anne Coates, said she wished she could have kept a copy of that take. Edward Anhalt won his second Academy Award for this adaptation of French playwright Jean Ennui's The Honour of God, which became a Broadway hit with Laurence Olivier and Anthony Quinn in the key roles. It's a rather French take on a piece of 12th century British history. King Henry II of England has trouble with the church, who take their orders from Rome. When the Archbishop of Canterbury dies, Henry has a brainwave. He appoints his old drinking and wenching buddy, Thomas a Becket, technically a deacon of the church, to be the new archbishop. Problem solved. Unfortunately, Beckett takes the job seriously and provides more successful opposition to Henry than his predecessors were able to do. It's a thinking person's costume drama dealing with two close friends who become ideological enemies in a clash between church and state. Sharpening the conflict, Ennui posits Henry and Beckett as bisexual lovers. Think T.S. Eliot's murder in the cathedral retooled, so to speak, with homoerotic subtext. This was made more oblique in the film version. It was 1963 in a big budget movie after all, but it's clearly percolating in the performances of Burton and particularly O'Toole in moments like this deep focus composition. Shot with a split diopter lens to put both men on the same focal plane rather than cut back and forth between them, it's an effective creative decision. Both O'Toole and Burton were nominated for Best Actor. In fact, the film scored 11 Academy nominations, but My Fair Lady and Mary Poppins gobbled up most of the 1964 awards. Beckett's only Oscar was for adapted screenplay. Ennui's original work contained significant historical errors, which Edward Anhalt was obliged to inherit because they were integral to the plot. Thomas of Beckett was not a Saxon as written. He was Norman, like Henry. Nor were the English clergy all Saxon, while the nobility were all Norman, like rival soccer teams. But much is made of the Norman-Saxon power differential pitched as a class struggle with contemporary echoes. Ennui's play also examines the collaboration of a conquered people with their conquerors, which had particular resonance for his French audience, still emotionally processing the Nazi occupation, but you get little of that in the film version. What you do get is dialogue full of meaty speeches and witty aphorisms, which give Burton and O'Toole, two of the greatest actors of their generation, opportunities to perform at the height of their powers. In 1968, O'Toole played Henry II again in the final years of his reign for the screen version of James Goldman's play The Lion in Winter. It is the better film, but Beckett has much to enjoy. The supporting cast is a gallery of top British stage actors, and if you have an eagle eye, you can spot the wicker man's Edward Woodward in a fleeting, uncredited moment. The photography by Academy Award winner Geoffrey Unsworth is quite an achievement, given the fact he had to light a full-size recreation of Canterbury Cathedral, the largest set built in Europe at that time. This was the work of production designer John Bryan, who had invited us to the studio and took pleasure in showing us some of the tricks of his trade. Like a semicircular miniature dome of the cathedral, only three foot in diameter, which was hung into a wide shot from above the camera in perfect alignment with the top edge of the set, an old school Hollywood device for making a large set even bigger at minimal expense. This trailer was made by National Screen Service in London, specifically by Esther Harris, my boss and mentor, when I joined the company six years later. 
Her choice of dialogue and images implies a fun historical romp, while grandiose music and purple commentary provides the film of importance pedigree. A good way to position a movie that is in fact a little too stately in its pacing. The voiceover artist, if you play the original trailer, is the incomparable Robert Beatty, a Canadian actor who came to England and never stopped working. I chose him for horror and action titles. Beckett is a film we are lucky to see. The negative was lost 25 years ago, but happily, the Academy Film Archive found the necessary elements to restore it. Thank you, Academy. Academy.